We are live. We are live. Perfect. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pafna from Artisanry, back again on the Tuesday Live with Carl and Francisco this time. Um, these series are called Creative Connections, Bringing the Community Together. And uh, every other Tuesday afternoon, we bring two of, our, two of our makers together. Carl, you host this, and we talk about business, what works for you and what doesn't. So thank you very much for uh, joining. But before I shut up, uh, Francisco, I have to say I love the scarf, the, uh, the, the green scarf that you've got on. Fantastic. Really, <laughs> what you need a blob of color in this, in this weather. <laughs> Carl, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's lovely to be back on uh, this afternoon. It is just the afternoon. Um, and today is our second um, Creative Connection with Francisco. Uh, the first one was to do with mental well-being and mental health and your business. And today is kind of like talking about things, business, our things that are business. Um, so not necessarily, you know, like the everyday how you do stuff, but how we do stuff as individuals to make our businesses a bit more successful or stand out from the crowds. And stuff like that if you have any questions please feel free to put them into the uh, facebook chat um and we will just get ourselves started so hello francisco it's really nice to see you again I, hello nice to see you again yes <laughs> really enjoyed our, our our meeting last week i was talking to lots of people about um the recovery thing i've got, got yes me, yeah, got very, very excited very excited. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, it was great speaking last week. And then this week, um, we're going to go in and we're just going to talk about how you, I suppose in effect, kind of run your business. How does your business work for you and what you do to make your business work for you? Because we're all individuals and actually just doing a standard kind of way of working your business can work. Of course, it can work. Um, but um, I think when you have a creative mind, the last thing you want to be is the same as everybody else. So how do we make ourselves stick out? Or I mean, stand out, not stick out. Stand out and be completely individual. So we'll just go straight into it and we'll start with the first question, if that's okay. So our yes. first question is, what was or is the biggest barrier you feel you have to achieving sales, whether that is going to markets or online or, or in shops or whatever? What do you find is your biggest barrier? Uh, well, I, I, I think uh, there are different barriers um, in different um, areas in, in our business. I think the, the first uh, 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 problem is uh, to uh, fear, <laughs> fear and shame for selling, <laughs> yeah. fear and, and shame for selling. Um, chain for, as I mentioned uh, last week, uh, in my case was feel very shame for charging for my work and ch charging the uh, proper amount. Uh, um, so um, I think that I think was some in the first barriers I talking, uh, I think about uh, emotionally or feelings personally are some kind of barrier as well. And uh, that happened because uh, uh, we don't val evaluate our work and what we are doing. And also every time uh, comparing with other people, <laughs> what the other people is doing uh, is not good because we, we all are, everyone is unique with uh, uh, their work and, you know, and the other thing, uh, I think for me, it has been a, a barrier as well, are expectations. Uh, because the expectations are, are really connected with um, frustration. <laughs> so uh, I think a lot of time we must be very realistic and what what kind of uh, business we can do. Uh, I mean, business uh, starting working alone as sole trader or something. No, a big company is different. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, we uh, put a realistic uh, uh, target or things like that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy to get frustrated and, and then Recovering from frustration is yeah. difficult as well. So uh, I think we must be realistic. And um, I think the uh, uh, yeah, 
Another thing, other barrier are also the self sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, when we uh, yeah start start suppose, supposing that something will happen, something bad. Uh, I, I mean, uh, 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 yes, uh, supposing that is something to do with the. Uh, I mentioned, I think, last week before us also uh, with the dualistic vision we have normally here in this part of the world, uh, thinking that things are good or bad, you know, so our expectation also uh, uh, could be good or bad. <laughs> and uh, so we started to, to do in uh, self sabotage sometimes. You see, I will I will try this. I will go to sell this, and then no, sure we I know don't work maybe or etc. Things like that, and finally we don't do anything, <laughs> or, yeah. or take long time for doing something. Um, yes, and so uh, these I think are uh, the barriers. And in my in my case. Um, Having a long way for learning, really, uh, and still learning every day, learning, and long, long way, uh, as I, as I mentioned uh, before, also uh, dealing with two uh, uh, with two with two activities uh, as an architect, as an artist, so uh, trying different things, uh, um, different kind of promotion, different kind of uh, selling system and uh, etc. But until, and, and a lot of indecision as well. So until uh, really one don't feel the, the need and because we, we have a economical need or a personal need to, to to demonstrate myself, in my case, that I, I can be able to do something good for my life, for for living, until <laughs> all these necessity are really a, a big pressure. Sometimes it's difficult to to pass to a, to the other stage, because I I know a lot of people that uh, yeah they are doing something, but they still have the support of family behind. So I, I still was uh, trusting on them and not doing too much and, uh, until you are alone, really alone and in big necessity. Something uh, yeah, so I think that's a def that for me that's kind of like a definite. I remember when I when I was kind of starting off yeah. my business just as a, a music teacher and there was no art in it at all seven years ago, and my partner at the time said I absolutely could work for myself, but I couldn't rely on him to pay for things if I couldn't afford to pay for things. So if I couldn't get my business to work for me, then I'd have to go back and work in school. And I remember thinking at the time, log that one, because that relationship's coming to an end very, very, very quickly. There's no support there. But I, actually that made me more determined at that time to go, right, I have to make this work because a lot is riding on this. I will have nothing if I don't make this work. But the self-sabotage, um, Thing is a massive thing that definitely if you can yeah self-fulfilling prophecies you know you can tell yourself oh well I knew that was going to happen because this is what I thought and I suppose releasing and letting go um from these kind of sort of things really does kind of help you not to follow through with the the thought processes but my goodness it's hard it's hard to to kind of do that um without yeah without yeah it's hard yeah I, I i get it i totally get it and it, it is difficult yeah. it really really is difficult um so yeah so kind of barrier wise for me you've talked about it the yourself getting we've talked about this before yourself getting in the way um sometimes working with others i find working i can find working with others quite difficult to do possibly because i have a bit of control issues in terms of i want my business to be a success because I, I know I can make it a success um, and then you get kind of caught up in a barrier with somebody else because you know whether that's selling through a shop or, or whatever um, and I, you know I've, I've had issues with shops where 
if they if they buy it off you directly and you know they're taking 50 percent and they buy it then that's fine whatever they do with it afterwards but it's the ones that take either take commission or are having their well commission's probably better but the ones that have where you're having to pay for the shelf i sometimes i i worry about that because they're getting their income from the shelf being paid for so therefore mm. to plug your products and sell your products is not really an issue for them because they've already got their payments they're not getting anything over and above by actually selling your products um, so I, yeah, I can find those, me having barriers to going and allowing myself to go into these places. But I also do think that sometimes shops, some shops, certainly one or two that I have been in, have um, been just not fair on myself and on other artists and other makers, and then can treat you really, really, really badly. And, and, and they, yeah, I find, I find that difficult. But I, I want to be able to go into these places, but I suppose distrust, there's a bit of distrust that I have in these spaces sometimes where I just think, mm, don't know if I trust you enough to do this. So yeah, so mm, difficult. It can be difficult. It can be difficult. How do you mm. measure success in terms of your work? Um, well, I, 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 I noticed that um, people uh, uh, start to be more and more interested in my work <laughs> and and they like my work and start to be interested in, not only in, in buying it and only uh, also in uh, interested in what how, how, how do I uh, used to do in the, the work uh, what is my inspiration and interested in the person as well uh, and um, also, I noticed that uh, people is more willing to to, to pay a good prices <laughs> connected with the uh, previous question. I was who was uh, afraid of uh, charging prices, but uh, and now I noticed that people is willing to pay. Mm. Oh. No, don't have gone. Right. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's just a freeze. I'll I'll speak just now, just in case Francisco's just having a bit of a freeze just now. But he was talking about the the charging, the prices, and I um I, I agree with him. I suppose I'll give your back, Francisco. Few. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you were talking about you know the, the... no yeah. But also, I was telling that uh, yes, if people is more uh, also is more interesting to. Uh, 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 willing to pay uh, good prices and even with something similar to what uh, 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 Bauna was commenting uh, uh, and just now uh, and uh, uh, people is willing to pay prices even with the charging of the shipping in in, in, yeah. in, in other countries I, I I learned that now and also uh, yes um, I think that these, these these signals are good indi indicator of uh, uh, success, uh, uh, and also um, in terms of a business. I mean, and and also, I realize that people like exclusivity. <laughs> yes. yes. So uh, to get something exclusive and no a copy and no uh, yeah very exclusive. Uh, so I. I think they are signal that my work is uh, is getting success and people is very, very willing to to buy them. Um, so that encouraged me to to leave architecture yeah. and uh, uh, focus only in in painting. I say I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more more than born more than architecture architecture work because. Uh, when uh, working as an architect, uh, there are a lot of uh, arguing, discussion, and dealing with the client. No, I don't lie. You know, I want this. I don't want that. They are the rules, the regulation, and uh, it was more tricky to to do, finalizing the, the business <laughs> than than the art. Uh, so uh, for me, I I remember a long time ago. I, I say to my wife. I would like to be like these people on the on the street here that put fruit, 
fruit there and they are selling the fruit. No, no more complicated than that. Yeah. And so I think I, I am something similar now with my paintings. <laughs> I think that's really important. And I, I, so I've discovered that, you know, I've done an affordable art range. I've done, um, you know, where the same things can be made. So I, I, have, I have a few product designs that are really successful and sell continuously, but I, I was really conscious that actually that sort of thing can bore me after a while, so I have to be careful and limit that sort of stuff. But actually, the with the fear of pricing things and, and and the more expensive it is, you think, oh no, I shouldn't be doing that. But actually, the reality for me is all the really expensive stuff is the stuff that rattles off the shelf. Uh, you know, if I could find more time to make up more of that kind of stuff, then I would. Um, I, I am trying to because these are the things that people are buying, so they're not scared. You, you find people kind of thinking about it if it's priced between 25 and maybe 95 pound but after you get kind of beyond the 100 pound mark people don't sit down to sit and think about it for terribly long they seem to be going right okay yep i'll take that yep i'll have that and especially when it's exclusively one-off design or it's a very limited uh, design then people yeah. i'm really interested in it because they realize that actually this is something that i'm investing in because it could be an investment for the future and certainly when i do all my my stitched buildings and that's so because there's no christmas markets really happening i opened up some kind of commission based spaces um for to kind of fill in the gap for the for the markets and they all went really 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 quickly and you're talking you know some of them are 265 pound commission spaces and stuff like that so people are not they're not really thinking long and hard about it they want it they want it done and when i was doing my exhibition in september you know when i first started doing the stitches 18 months ago i was like oh and then i can print i can get this scanned and i can make multiple prints of this and they'll sell really well and all of these things and then actually the reality came to it when i was doing it i actually thought no i don't want to do that because that's me diluting what's actually in front of me just now so for me it might not work like that so i didn't do all of that and as a result a lot more of the original work sold because they knew that that was it there wasn't going to be another one like that. There wasn't even going to be a print that would look like that one. And I think that's that that is really interesting, um, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to out of the box thinking, what have you done that has resulted in success? Uh, well, uh, I think my 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 big success is uh, I touched the heart of English people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with my collection of watercolor with pubs. Color with? Uh, pubs. Pub, ah, pub, right. pub. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> the good yes. old English puppy. Yes. Yeah, I, I started to paint in them because I like when I arrived here, I was a dark, beautiful building decorated and yes, beautiful places. And uh, because it was very different of a, a bar or something like that in, in my country. Uh, yeah. So I find that they were very beautiful decorated outside and yeah. some of them inside. And then when I, I, when I knew more about the, 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 the pub uh, life, it was more interesting and, and the history is fantastic. And so um, um, I started painting them for my, my personal <laughs> pleasure and, um, and then realized that uh, people like this painting and love the, <laughs> the paintings and love the pubs. And, and the pubs are uh, really uh, part of the culture in this country. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. From, from the time of the Romans and so, Oh, we have another freeze. Yeah, so I think you, uh, Francisco is absolutely right when it comes to talking about um, having kind of like landmark buildings. People are heavy into landmark buildings. When I did my exhibition back in September, there was one piece that I did, which was a street scene of Edinburgh from Waverley Bridge. And I swear yeah. to God, I could have sold that one piece 20 times. Everybody came in and went, darn, it's sold. And I was just like, why did I limit it just to the one? And how am I going to go about making this scene again that looks different? But, I, you know, I am thinking about it. But, I mean, 20 of them could have sold no problem at all. So people are really in, heavy into anything that, that pulls at the heartstrings, like you said, Francisco, and that remind them of happy times or happy spaces and happy places. And that can be a really kind of nice... Um, way to go about doing stuff but pubs that's a really interesting one a very very interesting 
one that yes. I'm kind of not surprised by, but what I'm, maybe I'm a little bit more surprised by. You know, I was like, I mean, I suppose actually that would make sense. And and especially in England, I don't know so much in Scotland. We do enjoy our pubs in Scotland. We really do. But actually, in England, there are so many ye, old, ye olde pubs, as they call, you know, that, that date back centuries and centuries and centuries that yeah. have been drunk by, you know, so many different people. Yeah, I can understand why that becomes a... Yeah, a... and people have a, a lot of sentimental connection with them because uh, sometimes generations of people of yeah. one family have been yeah. uh, uh, attending to one pub. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Very interesting. I was having a look um, through the, the the internet as well, trying to kind of look for inspiration because, you know, obviously we're in difficult times just now. We can't get to markets and things like that. And there's a few um, that I was like, oh, I really like. So there's a place, a wonderful place down in Straven, which is in kind of nor North Lanarkshire or South Lanarkshire. I can't remember which one. Um, and they are a creative community and they were doing... Um, gift lists so and just like you would if you're doing a wedding or whatever you'd maybe get a john lewis gift list they were doing gift lists for christmas which i think were becoming a bit of a success success come into our shop have a browse write down the things that you really like on this list here and then start just ripping it to your family so that maybe they'll come down and they'll purchase and i thought that's a really nice idea and then just now there's like private shopping appointments in shops so there's a few places in edinburgh that have just um been doing it and one of them is a place called spectacular i'm doing a wee plug for them here i hope that's all right but they're you know it's good to support everybody if we mm. can but a, a really nice place called spectacular in brunsfield um here in edinburgh and they put up some appointments and they've sold out all of their exclusive shopping appointments and it costs nothing to do it but you get 45 minutes on your own in the shop to do some christmas shopping and i thought that's really clever way of going about doing things because i think that pulls in and, and that kind of also ties in with the exhibition that i did back in september where i limited eight people to being in the space every half an hour and it meant pretty much all the spaces for the well there was 160 people came in through the the exhibition because you were kind of limiting it and it was looking like it was a bit more exclusive so I, you know I like the idea of everybody that are doing kind of really out of the box thinking and I think maybe spectacular are going to do phenomenal phenomenally well and there's lots of other places clothes shops that are allowing it and they're doing it themselves so mm, it's very interesting reading and then thinking how do we do it and one of the things i'd really like to do so i have some different artwork up on my wall just now uh -huh. from an amazing lady called judith shaler and um, her work is spectacular and because i do my friday night lives i'm trying to involve some people and um, other artists in it where i you know i plug my own artwork but i'm also trying to plug work from other people and i show it live on the friday night lives where i can have anything up to 65 or 75 people watching and then it actually might get viewed five six seven hundred times you know, between um, between shows. And I just think, yeah, it's it's nice to do that. And I, I like the idea, and I've had this discussion with another friend who is an abstract artist, about having home exhibitions. So when COVID finally does, you know, kind of get under control, is how do I go about having a living exhibition? So come to my home and, 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 and be at, in this place with me and feel a bit as a home, but also look what's up and around and what could be purchased. How do I, how do I do that? And I think I'm going to try that um, next year because I have, I have a lovely yeah. garden. I have, you know, a really lovely home that would be like a mini, it is a bit like a mini um, museum to some stuff, I tell you. But it, it would be really nice to be able to have people come in and share in that where, you know, I'd bake and make tea and coffee and just sit and be in the space and, and be in the garden and, and come and have a look at people's artwork and buy from there. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe that's something that I'll be able to do maybe next summer. Um, is actually have a living exhibition, which I think is yeah. different, would be a different. Yeah, that that exhibition. works very well. That works very well. I I I watch a, a kind of documentary of a gallery in America, and it was a big room in the big gallery, but the inside was divided in small rooms because we're Chinese artists, and why they are not using the the whole space as a big. Because in China, some artists exhibit in their house. Yeah. So the, the big gallery was divided in small rooms like that. Yeah. Very interesting. And that's what. Really small. Yeah. And, and I, th I think it's because you want also to, uh, you want people to realize how the art could fit into their home. 
So you mm. come into my home, this is my home, yes. this is how I live, and this is how art works in my home, and then you get them to envisage how it would work in their home, and I think that's really important. And I think it could come down to even doing things like, you know, whether you were doing almost even a flea market type thing, you know, yes. or an antiques market within the home, a living antiques market, rather than it just being on a table with loads of stuff, how would I, you know, pile everything into my bedroom? that I don't want to sell and then replace furniture and stuff like that and people can see what it looks like in the home. I think that's possibly a really good idea. I'm, I'm certainly but not got nothing to lose in trying it, so why wouldn't you? Yes, a good point. And once, one last thing, by the way, now this year, the last month with all this problem, uh, how the pubs are more restricted of, of opening and sometimes closing, really. Yeah. Yeah, people are missing more of them and have been getting more commissions, commissions, and and they are buying more painting of pubs as well. But yes, isn't that interesting? And I think you know, I mean, we can't deny that COVID has had a devastating effect on many, 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 many people's lives and livelihoods and and everything. And it's just you know heartbreaking to see what you know how it's what it's done and it's not just what it's done but what, maybe what the governments have done as well you know in not being able to handle it in a better kind of format without a shadow of a doubt but um it's also that's not also the case for everybody you know and I you know and I as an artist and as a musician can only be a little bit grateful for it actually because it has made my sales go through the roof I, I have I am far better off this year financially than I have ever been in my business and a lot of that is to do with COVID and a lot of the mm -hmm. restrictions have been placed on life and, and having to go, right, okay, I need to think about this differently. How do I get it out there that's a bit different and engage with the people? So, yeah, it's a right, uh, it's difficult. It's it's a right mix of things. Right, do we have any questions? Oh, can't hear you. You'll need to switch on your microphone. Just checking. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I get no questions today. No questions today. <laughs> uh, no questions at the moment but no that was really interesting chat thank you very much I uh, really enjoyed I, I do like you know I do re identify with some of them especially the one about uh, where we feel that you know we're just not good enough to get it and you know to flip that devil off your uh, shoulder uh, it's 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 a business you know irrespective of what business you are in it is something you have to do every morning you have to reset every morning and remind yourself that you can do it and uh, yeah, given it's coming on a day when I'm really uh, struggling, it's it's a good reminder for me to go back and think about you know I can do it, and uh, absolutely, um, you're already affecting change, you know, and as and that measurement, you know, that you like we've talked about how do we measure a success, is is not monetary. It it, sh it probably shouldn't be monetary. Um, you know, certainly in the short term when you're getting your business up and going. It's not something you should measure monetary wise if you can if you can afford not to, and that you need to be able to measure it in the how you're creating the connections and how you're you, you are being as a business and being as a person. I think that's the most important thing. I would agree with you, and I suppose there is there is a very balanced view there. Uh, you know, you do need the money to pay the bills, but how much do you need is you know it's I've always said it's what you do with the money which is more important. Uh, earning money is not a problem, you know, everybody wants it, everybody needs it, and, you know, who doesn't like nice things, yeah. but what do we really do with the money is where uh, the ethics and the integrity of a, of, of a company, a person, a business comes in, and that's, that's what is perhaps the most important thing. Uh, but really pleased to hear, Francisco, your paintings are doing well, really, really good. I know you do some classes and you do already invite people in your home to, or in your studio. Um, how is that yeah. going? Yes, uh, uh, well, uh, now, uh, well, we are with lockdown here, so nobody's coming. <laughs> um, in, in, the, in the middle of the two lockdowns, uh, uh, people was, was coming to, to visit him to see the painting and thing, and no, no coming back to, or no uh, thinking in teaching yet, because the people are afraid still, so no doing courses or something. Um, um, yes, but the the the, the issue was uh, uh, exhibiting or to have a, a permanent open studio is 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 very good. I, I think worked very well. And 
not only well for showing, not only for uh, uh, talking with people, to know people, to, to know uh, people, your neighbors, your yeah. local people, um, and it's good for uh, myself as well, you know. Uh, you can generate new friendships and things like that are, are important in life. <laughs> Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, thank you very much, Jens, for your time. I'll call let you wrap it up, but uh, thank you very much for a wonderful conversation again. Yeah, thank you very much, Francisco. It's been really lovely speaking to you and getting to know you and finding out a little bit more about you and how your business ticks. And thank you everybody else for listening in and tuning in. And hopefully, um, if you have learned anything, if you still want to ask questions, you can still do so in the in the Facebook chat because the video will be in the Facebook um, feed anyway. And we will try and get back to you and answer any questions that may come up there. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, I enjoy that. <laughs> thank you. Have a good time. Right, take care of yourselves. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.